Hello, teachers. Now, apologies. It's been 10 days since my last video, and that was never the idea. I said at the start of this year, I promised that I would make a video every week. I've just come back from a conference in Warsaw, which is a great fun conference. Hello, Synergy Garden. And um, anyway, you know what it's like. So from now on, every Wednesday on pain of death which I'm not really sure what that means. It doesn't mean you can kill me. It just means I'm serious, all right? Uh, and this week, I've got a short story that you can use with your students. I suggest that you use this either with mature teenagers or immature adults. Mature teenagers, because one of the first lines is a reference to an idiomatic expression in English, which some teachers could consider to be slightly problematic. It is something you shouldn't do, which is to shit on your own doorstep, which means that you shouldn't do things that could be problematic in your own community or at work, for example. I've heard people say that they don't date people at work because that is shitting on your own doorstep. Maybe it's a bit crude, don't know what you think, but it's necessary to this story, I feel. Now, the thing about this story is that it's based on a short viral video. It's a viral video which I've seen recently doing the rounds on TikTok, but I remember it from the early days of YouTube, around 2016 perhaps, which isn't so early. It might be early to you depending on your age. And it's called The Hand That Feeds You, and as I, as I read it to you, What a, oh God, so dirty. What I'd like you to do is to try to imagine the video. What does it look like? Try to play it in your mind cinema screen as you hear the story. That would be the student's task as well. All right, you ready? This is called The Hand That Feeds You and it goes like this. Kevin was brought up well. He was always taught two things. Number one, never bite the hand that feeds you and number two, don't shit on your own doorstep. Now, although he sometimes did the latter, Kevin always respected the hand. After all, he depended on it. And over the years, he'd formed an excellent relationship with it. But Kevin was to learn an important lesson. Sometimes those with great power do not appreciate the responsibility that comes with it. Perhaps the hand was bored, or perhaps it just needed to remind Kevin who was the boss. Kevin stood speechless, a broken hamster, a perfect image of betrayal. The hand that fed him became the hand that failed him. All that was sacred was now lost. How could Kevin forgive? How could he continue? How could life ever be the same again? Hello darkness, my old friend. So if you saw the thumbnail to this video, you'd have seen this little guy. I called him Kevin, Kevin the hamster. And he's quite happily eating seed from his owner's hand, but the owner decides to not let go of one of the seeds. Kevin tries his best to get it off the hand, but the hand will not give it up. And this causes Kevin just to suddenly become traumatized, to almost give up on life. He's got this expression on his little face, which is just heartbreaking. Oh, and then just to reinforce the utter misery, we get Simon and Garfunkel's sound of silence. Hello, darkness, my old friend. And I don't know if we're anthropomorphizing here. I, I don't even know if I pronounced that word correctly, you know, to give animals human characteristics and personalities. Maybe that's what we're doing here to Kevin the hamster, but he does look very, very unhappy about what's just happened. Anthropom anth anthropom anthropomorphize, anthropomorphize, 
anthropomorphize. By the way, could I trouble you for a cheeky little like of this video? Perhaps you could even subscribe to the channel. Who's to say? It's really interesting because I actually told this story in Warsaw at the weekend. I told the story, I showed the video, and then we revisited the story and I told it a second time. And the teachers seem to appreciate it more the second time around. So this is something to be aware of with your students. Try it for yourself. Go back and listen to that story a second time now that you've seen the video. And finally, I would use this video and this story to set up a discussion about the ethics of pranking or teasing your pet. There's information about this in the accompanying lesson plan information below. I used to have a dog called Paddy. This is a long, long time ago. He's no longer with us. And Paddy was one of those dogs that was just absolutely obsessed with food absolutely obsessed with it. You know the kind. And one winter, I took Paddy's bowl into the garden and filled it up full of snow and then teased him. Do you want your dinner, Paddy? Do you want your dinner? And he's going crazy and he's drooling. Here's your dinner, Paddy. Here's your dinner. I put it on the floor. He stuck his face into this bowl. Took him a few seconds. He looked up at me with a stupid expression, his snout covered in snow, with these eyes as if to say, WTF, Jamie, what are you doing? This is my dinner. This is the most important time of my day, and you're messing with me. And I, I don't know if Paddy ever forgave me. And after having watched this video of this poor little hamster, I think I would maybe think twice about pranking Paddy again. I was a kid. I was only 10 years old. I'm sure he would have forgiven me. I don't know who's to say. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.